Next up is an agent with Compass. By the way, I happen to know he actually sold Michael Jordan's house, which I think is pretty awesome. But Kofi Narte is here to share with us his 10 daily habits to go from rookie to top producer. So welcome, Kofi. All right, you guys keep your hands ready for me real quick. Hands up, hands up, hands up, hands up. When I say single, give me a single clap. When I say double, give me a double clap. You guys ready? All right, give me a single. Single, double, double. Awesome. Gives me a second for my heart to calm the hell down. <laughs> so when they asked me to talk about going from rookie to top producer, it immediately took me to my sports days. I'm going to talk fast. They gave me like eight minutes. Um, but it took me to my sports days. I played football over across the bay at Berkeley. Go Bears. There's any Golden Bears in here. And <laughs> go Bears. And I thought about being a rookie and even just trying to control my own destiny. And there were a lot of factors that impacted our role on the team, whether it was other players, the coaches. We went through three different head coaches. I had five different position coaches. And there was a mental shift that I had to make. And it was not until actually my junior year, going into my senior year, that I decided I wanted to control my own destiny. And even if I couldn't control the outcome, I could control the journey, right? And so that helped me to do much better my senior year. I actually ended up with a shot with the Raiders. But more importantly, it helped me transition into my business world and some of the philosophies that have helped me become a, a, a pretty good producing agent in real estate. More to go, but doing pretty well. So I'm going to share with you guys my uh, 10 things. And see here we are. Number one, recite a daily mantra. Every morning I recite a daily mantra. I look in the mirror, I say it to myself three times. It's something that should tell you who you are, who you want to be, and how you want to get there. And I do this every day to the point that my nine-year-old daughter started walking around the house mocking me, talking about, I am Kofi. And <laughs> so I made her get her own daily mantra, and I'll share with you my daily mantra at the end of this. But it recharges you, it reminds you of where you're going, and it reminds you of the path that you're on. Number two, write a focus and finish list. Focus and finish is my motto. Um, as an entrepreneur, we're often distracted by the next shiny object, the next new thing. We're distracted by Facebook. We're distracted by getting coffee, by bathroom breaks. We don't even have to go to the bathroom, right? So I write a focus and finish list every day. My team, we write focus and finish lists every week where we focus on the small steps that lead to the big goals. We finish things to completion before announcing that we're doing it. We do tasks and projects to completion before announcing to the, the public what we're doing, right? So we want to make sure we're focused on that list, prioritizing the list, and knocking it out one by one. Next up, read or reread for 20 minutes a day. Now, the emphasis is really on rereading. You hear a lot of things that say read three, four, five, ten new books every year. Screw that. Read five new books every year and reread five other books every year. When you read a book, I have this thing about listening with selfish ears. We're at Inman. We're hearing a lot of things. Listen for the things that re resonate with you. Same thing with reading. Read for the things that resonate with you, for your business, for your life, and highlight those things. When you've gone through a book, you probably have highlighted 30 to 40%. So it's easy to reread that book three, four times a year. It takes me back to the Bruce Lee quote. I fear not the man who studied 10,000 kicks, but the man who studied one kick 10,000 times. Right? Own the information. So reread. Keep books next to your bed, next to your desk. Reread. Now, you're probably saying, what the hell is this? <laughs> it's not a typo. Uh, it's actually pronounced chin chin so so, so so chin chin. My father's from Ghana in West Africa, and this is something that he would say to me as I was growing up. And it's really the African version of eat that frog. It's doing the hard thing first. It, the literal translation is more of the hard before the soft or the rough and scratchy before the rich and succulent, right? And so start your day with that. Do the tough thing first, whether it's a challenging email, a challenging phone call, a tough negotiation. It's like getting that big boulder off the hill, but it's a downhill motion after that. So if you can eat that frog, chin chin, so so, so, so chin chin, you're on your way to a more productive day. It actually clears your path for your thought process as well. Next up, humble yourself to changes. Um, we're all guilty of this because we're all business owners and we're all entrepreneurs, right? And so we've been forced to figure things out. We've been forced into a leadership role of having to take charge, make decisions, figure out what's right, what's wrong. And even the people we have around us, it's not that they're not leaders, but they're often looking to us for leadership. And so what happens is we can get in our own ways. So you have to ask yourself daily, ask your team daily. Most importantly, ask your consumers daily, what can you do better? and open yourself up to the bright minds, sometimes critical, sometimes tough, but also sometimes positive feedback around you. It's through the collective wisdom that we can grow exponentially much faster. 
Number six, fight through good to get to great. A lot of times we get caught up in what's good. We get caught up in what's going well. Companies are guilty of this, individuals are guilty of this. We're on a good path, we're making a shit ton of money. Things are great, right? You feel like they're great, but they're actually just good. And we're caught in our business instead of taking time to work on our business. Now this is something that truthfully I don't do every day, but maybe once a week. I block out time to figure out what are the key differentiators I can do in my business, the nuanced shifts or differences, because they're usually very small, to exponentially grow my business. And give yourself the runway to do that. It's not an overnight thing, sometimes it does take some time. So try to get out of your way, get out of the way of good so that you can break through to great. Seven, persist through challenges. Persist through challenges. This is really about resiliency. We all get knocked down, even in football. I played wide receiver, but even the cornerbacks, you know, they get beat on the play, they have to bounce back quickly, they have to forget about that. Even the challenges, escrows fall apart, deals fall apart. You know, even, even getting caught up in good can be a challenge, right? And so it's really about that resiliency, giving yourself the grace to come back, bounce back. And another quick thing, look for opportunities in those challenges because sometimes the challenge is an opportunity to pivot. Lastly on this, give yourself the runway to work through challenges. Instead of having a one-day plan or two-day plan, have a three-year horizon, because that way in 30, 60, 90 days, you're not throwing in the towel, because you know your ultimate goal is still two and a half years out, right? Number eight, be a resource to others. We've often heard give to get. Well, just give to give. Right? Be a resource to others. Provide information to others. If you can articulate your value proposition to your customer base, you're halfway to getting people knocking on your door, calling you, emailing you, come list me calls for us real estate agents. But people who are looking for your services and seeking out your services, more importantly than just your consumers, do this for other people in your lives, other vendors, other friends, other contacts. Send them an article that's relevant to them. Right? Send them some business tips that you've come across, a book recommendation, a list that you've seen. Hey, I was thinking about you, wanted to send this your way. Now, if it's like weight loss or something like that, top 10 weight, don't send that. It might, <laughs> it might rub them the wrong way. But if it's something that resonates with their industry or a change or a law or something like that, send it over to them. It's going to come back to you tenfold, I promise you. Dream, but don't daydream. It is important to block out that time to be able to open up your mind. Open up your mind to the possibilities. And when I say possibilities, I'm talking about dreaming. So they're the possibilities that aren't really tangible in this moment, but you're gonna get up, you're gonna wake up, and you're gonna set forth a plan to get there. Daydreaming, on the other hand, is escaping from reality. When you're in those moments of this shit sucks, right? And you just wanna get away. But those aren't goal-based. Dreams can be goal-based, but you have to set the action items in front of you to get there and make sure you do have the time to do it, whether it's a walk, whether it's yoga, whether it's just quiet time or your headset on with music, with no words, so your mind can just be open to the ideas. Last but not least, eat well, exercise, and rest, right? If you're not taking care of yourself on this journey, you're not going to be able to service others. You have to take care of your body. You have to eat breakfast in the morning. You have to find time to work out. Even as I was flying up here from LA, they said, put my mask on before helping you know, the person next to you or your children. You have to take care of yourself and empower yourself and strengthen yourself to then be a better resource to others. One of my Kofiisms or the things that I figured out in my life is one of our things in, while we're here on earth is to realize all of our God-given gifts and share them with the world, right? That's one of our goals. And if you're gonna do that, you have to be in a healthy place, you have to be in a strong place, because then you get more yourself to be able to give more and share more with the world. And lastly, because I promised Inman I would do this, I'm gonna share with you my daily mantra. So I get up in the morning, I look in the mirror, and I say this to myself three times. I am Kofi Nate Narte. I'm a strong husband, father, full mogul millionaire, and man of God. I will build my business and build others through discipline execution and my ability to focus and finish. Thank you.